Hello. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about the research design regression discontinuity. Uh, this is another way in which we can try to identify a causal effect, even if we can't necessarily control for all of the things that would be on back doors, giving us endogeneity problems. Uh, so we're going to be trying to isolate a channel through which we think we have some random variation in our treatment. Uh, and we are going to be focusing directly on that so as to try to use it as a form of natural experiment. So uh, what is regression discontinuity in particular? Regression discontinuity applies whenever you have a treatment that is assigned on the basis of a cutoff in, a, in what's called a running variable. So you have a variable, it varies up and down, uh, and then at some point, if you are above that amount or below that amount, you get treated. And if you're on the other side of that cutoff, you don't get treated. So to give a quick example, imagine for that you take some sort of uh, aptitude test when you're in school, uh, and then if you score above a certain amount, they move you from your regular classroom into the gifted and talented classroom. That would be an example of a setting where regression discontinuity would work, right? If you are below the test score, then you don't get the gifted and talented uh, education, and if you are above the test score, then you do get the gifted and talented education. Uh, now, when this happens, here's what the causal diagram sort of looks like. Uh, right? So if, if you think about the relationship between your running variable, which is the variable that you, that you get assigned to treatment on the basis of, so here that would be your test score uh, for the, in the aptitude test, uh, and treatment, uh, we would of course expect that treatments can, might cause your outcome, whatever the outcome is, let's say your earnings as an adult, maybe the gifted and talented program makes you earn more as an adult, but also that test score should be related to both your getting the treatment and also your test score as an adult. Uh, now, this is a problem, of course, right? We would then need to control for your running variable uh, in order to get rid of that back door. Uh, and there's a problem, of course, in that the treatment is assigned on the basis of the running variable. So if we control for the running variable, we will be controlling away our treatment. But actually, that's not quite true. Most of the time, the running variable has nothing to do with treatment, right? So let's say the cutoff is 90. You got to get above a 90 on the test to get in gifted and talented. The difference between a 30 and a 40 doesn't matter, right? Your, your running variable can vary down there and it will affect your, your earnings as an adult perhaps, but it won't affect uh, your getting into the gifted and talented program. Whereas the difference between an 89 and a 91, well, that does account for whether you get it or not. So really the diagram doesn't really look like this. It looks sort of like this. Uh, so we have the running variable and the running variable affects treatment, but only through to the extent that it makes you go over that cutoff for the running variable. Okay, so what this means is that uh, we can close the back, we have a back door here from treatment to cutoff to running variable to outcome, and we can close that back door by controlling for running variable. But the key is this, we control for running variable everywhere except for the cutoff. We allow some variation in the running variable right at that cutoff. And the idea is this, that by focusing all of our variation right on that cutoff, we're effectively controlling for running variable. So we're closing the back door. But within a narrow window right around the cutoff, it's basically random whether you get the treatment or not, right? Somebody who gets a 30 on the test is probably very different from somebody who gets an 85, right? But somebody who gets an 89 versus somebody who gets a 91, those are very similar people, right? That could just be, you know, whether it was raining outside on the day you took the test, right? Pretty, pretty random stuff. Did you have a good day or a bad day, you know? Or even if it is an accurate reflection of your skills, you know, there's just not a lot of difference between 89 and a 91. Uh, and so we might make the claim that it's basically random around the cutoff, that the assignment treatment is random around the cutoff, uh, and that it's not going to be related to anything else that might be on back doors, right? Because this isn't really what the diagram looks like, right? We really have lots of other things on back doors, other things that are going to be related to uh, your earnings as an adult and whether you get the treatment or not, right? Everything that's related to your test score, for example, right? All of the, the uh, sort of background stuff that could be going on there. But if we focus just on that narrow uh, uh, window, we are effectively controlling for, for, for test score, but in a way that allows for there to be variation in treatment. And so we kind of have a sort of random assignment between uh, the above and below groups. So we're going to focus on just comparing right above and below the cutoff. Here's sort of how this works. You can imagine we have this data, right? We have a running variable here that is uh, related to our outcome variable, right? So we have an upward slope naturally. So there's clearly a relationship between this running variable and the outcome. Uh, and the treatment occurs if you, if you jump right over that little dotted cutoff line in the middle. So what we're gonna do is, first of all, we're gonna, we're gonna just care about what happens. We're gonna create a binned chart uh, that we're just looking at uh, the average of the outcome based on that running variable. 
Okay, but then we're gonna get rid of most of the variation. We're only gonna focus in on the difference right below the cutoff to right above the cutoff. And the, the jump that we see right at the cutoff, that's gonna be the effect that we're gonna say is there, right? Because comparing the people just below and just above, that's basically random assignment. The only real difference between them uh, is that the treatment was assigned to one of them and not the other. Uh, and so we can get the causal effect of the treatment using that cutoff. That's the idea here anyway. Of course, that's using a binned chart. We're just sort of taking averages within bins. We might want to use a little bit more information uh, from the other parts of the chart to make our estimate a little bit better. Because what we're really trying to do is try to estimate what the scores are or what the outcomes are right below the cutoff and right above. And we can use things like all the data. We can fit lines to get better ideas of what that jump really looks like. And so we can do this with regression. And really all we have to do is try to fit two different regression lines on either side of the cutoff and then see what we predict uh, on either side of the cutoff using those fitted lines. So here's sort of the idea of what we're doing. So we're gonna fit an ordinary least squares line just like before, okay? Uh, but the difference is that we're gonna fit one line on the left side of the cutoff and another line on the right side of the cutoff. Then the way that those lines are shaped is gonna tell us what we predict the outcome to be at the cutoff depending on which direction you're coming from. So if we follow this line on the left, we'd say, here's what I predict your outcome is gonna be with a test with a with the X value of 0.5. Uh, and I'm gonna then come out at it from the right. Here's what I predict your X value would be with a cut or your Y value would be with a cutoff of 0.5. And the jump that we see, the jump that we predict using our ordinary least squares fits, that is gonna be our regression discontinuity effect. Okay? And here's how we can do it using regression. Basically, all we're gonna have to do is just fully interact our line with whether you're above or below the cutoff. So the first step that we're going to take is that we're going to take our x variable and we're going to center it. Okay, so, and this isn't actually necessary, but it does make the math and interpretation a lot easier. So we're going to take that x variable, whatever our running variable is on the x-axis, and we're going to subtract out the cutoff. So if you were, let's say, uh, two points above the cutoff, let's say we're, we're back to the, to the gifted and talented exam, you have to get above a 90. If you have a 92, we might have used to say you had a 92. Now we're going to say you have a 2 because you are 2 above the cutoff. Then we're going to take this regression line uh, that we have uh, and we're just going to interact it with treated. So treated being you're above the cutoff. Okay. Uh, and so if you think about our regular regression line, we would have y uh, equals beta zero plus beta one times x or x centered as it were, right? That would be a, if we fitted a single line across the entire graph. But what I want to do is I want to fit two lines. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a, the, the treated, the people on the right side of the cutoff, their own intercept. So I'm going to do plus beta one times treated. And I'm gonna give them their own slope. So I'm gonna take X centered, I'm gonna multiply that by treated as well. So now I really have two different lines baked into this model. The line for the people who are, who are not treated, who are on one side of the cutoff is beta zero plus beta two times X centered. Okay, that's one line. Then there's a different line for people on the right side of the cutoff. Their intercept is beta zero plus beta one and their slope is beta two plus beta three, right? So we have two different lines, one on the left side and the other on the right. We're gonna run this regression. What we're gonna get is this beta one value, basically what the intercept jumps by at the cutoff is going to be our regression discontinuity effect. And are we focusing on this intercept here? Because we centered the X variable. Uh, because we centered the X variable, this intercept here is our prediction of what, the ch of what the difference between the non-treated and treated people are when the x value is zero. When is x zero? At the cutoff, right? So at the cutoff, what is the difference between the treated and untreated group? That is given by this right here. That's how much the intercept jumps by when we go from untreated to treated. So that gives us our regression discontinuity effect. Now here I've shown two straight lines on either side of the cutoff. You don't have to stop at straight lines. You can fit polynomial curves, for example, if you think there's some curviness going on. To do this, we can follow the exact same procedure uh, of just thinking about what a single line would look like. So y equals beta zero plus beta one times x plus beta two times x squared. Center it and then take that entire thing and multiply it by treated. So here we have the original line by itself and here we have that exact, all the exact same stuff but, in, but multiplied times treated. So beta zero, uh, a, a con which is a constant, and we get a constant times treated. Beta one times x, here we get beta four times treated times x. 
beta 5 times x or beta 2 times x squared. Here we have beta 5 times treated times x squared, right? So we're interacting the entire equation with treated. So we are fitting a different line on either side. And because we've centered the x variable, the coefficient on treated itself gives us how much the jump is at the cutoff, which is exactly what we want to see. We want to isolate that jump. Uh, and then that is going to give us the regression discontinuity effect. Now, of course, there's some assumptions that go along with this. Uh, for this to work, we need to assume that the only thing changing at the jump is the treatment itself, right? The reason we're, we're doing this in the first place is because we think that on either side of the cutoff, there's not really anything changing except for the treatment. It's basically random which side you're on. And so if something else is going on at the cutoff as well, well, then, you know, it's not going to work quite like that, right? So let's say if you get a test score above 90, you get into gifted and talented, and also they send you a check for $5,000. I don't know. Uh, in that case, then the effect that we get would not just be the effect of getting into gifted and talented, it would be the effect of getting into gifted and talented and getting your $5,000, uh, which of course is not the effect that we are looking for. Uh, we can express this assumption as being the a cutoff is smooth. Uh, the potential outcomes is smooth at the cutoff. So if nobody got the treatment, we would just sort of have a nice straight line for the outcomes, right? If nobody had gotten the treatment. And if everybody had gotten the treatment, it would again be a nice smooth line. There's no jump here. The only reason we see a jump is because some people got treated some people didn't, right? So there's no other thing going on that leads to a jump at the cutoff. All right, that is it for this video. I'll talk a little bit more about some of the other things we need to think about with regression discontinuity in the next video. Thank you.